unit focuses on conformity and obedience to authority. Uh, there's a lot of research in here, um, but a lot of it comes to the same conclusion. So you don't want to have to worry specifically so much about uh, memorizing the studies, but really looking at overall what are the outcomes from the research studies in the area relating to conformity and compliance, obedience, acceptance, all that sort of stuff. So let's talk a little bit about what we're going to be looking at in this unit. So conformity is basically changing our behaviors in order to um, be more in line with what we're seeing in our environment. So does that necessarily mean that we change how we think about something? No, definitely not. So compliance is conformity while we disagree with what's going on. So if your boss asks you to do something, and even though you personally disagree with it, you still do it in order to keep your job, that would be an example of complying with an order or with a request. Um, obedience is doing what needs to be done or what re is required through conformity. So your boss asks you to do XYZ and you do it. Um, so on the word of a good authority, you actually um, do comply. Now you may not change how you think about it again, but you're def definitely being obedient. Um, and acceptance is going to be in conformity with agreeing with what's going on. So if someone tells you that, um, you know, this is how we do things here, and you say, okay, and you internalize this is how we do things at this place of work, and you behave as you're expected to, then that's what we call acceptance, especially if you then walk around and tell other people, new people at the, at the job, this is how we do things here, that would be considered acceptance. So you've accepted the idea, and you've gone along with the required behavior. Um, we do see that when we look at group behaviors specifically, when groups are cohesive, when they're very similar, um, when they've been together a long time, they know each other really well, they're more likely to um, conform, they're more likely to comply, and sometimes they're more likely to accept what's going on with the group. Um, but definitely they're more likely to be um, obedient to you know, the, the, um, the, the leaders of their group. Whereas if we have a non-cohesive group, people are more likely to question a leader and to not obey orders or requests from a leader. Um, and a lot of times we may not uh, comply or conform due to what we call psychological reactance, which is this idea that everyone wants to be thought of and seen as an individual who makes their own decisions. So if we start pointing out to people, hey, look, you're conforming, a lot of times people, instead of saying, you know what, you're right, I am conforming, they will instead that jacks up their, causes them to, to experience psychological reactions where they say like, no, I'm not conforming, I'm not a conformist, everyone else is, but I'm not. And so then they go out and behave in a certain way to kind of demonstrate their individuality and how they make uh, decisions for themselves. So <clears throat> it can be really important when we're working with um, a, a task or behavior that requires at least conformity, if not acceptance, um, that we don't remind people that, you know, while I know that you're an individual, um, we still need you to behave in this manner, because if we do that, then we might arouse psychological reactants. And when we arouse psychological reactants, when we tell people, when you tell your adolescent, hey, because I'm your parent, I say that you have to do this, you have to conform to my requirements, you have to be obedient to me as an authority member, um, then we're more likely to see psychological reactants where the, the adolescent gives the parent the either proverbial or actual finger and doesn't listen to what the parent has to say. Um, so we may also wonder, you know, why is it that people conform? Um, some people conform due to normative social influence. So if I'm in a new situation and I don't know what the social norms are, I don't know how to behave, I don't know what the expectation is, then I may be more likely to look around and see what everyone else is doing and just follow suit to simply um, comply or, you know, accept, but most likely comply. So I'm going along, I may not agree with what's going on, but I'm still going to go along with what, what others are doing. Um, so if I want to be accepted 
as a group member or as a, a person that is, you know, considered normal, then I may look around, see what the norm is, and behave in that manner. Um, now, sometimes we look around for informational influence. So we actually ask people, um, you know, what what should I do in this situation? And we may conform based upon what they tell us. So if you go to the workplace and they tell you, okay, this is how we do this, and you know, people who haven't previously done it this way have gotten fired, then that's informational influence that lets us know that um, this is how to conform, and people who do not conform will be dealt with in this manner. One of the things that a lot of students ask about during this unit is, you know, uh, is conformity bad? And if you think about it, in certain instances, it can be seen as bad. In certain instances, it can be seen as perfectly normal. Um, so why do we stop at a traffic light when it turns red? Well, we have been informed through informational influence that that's what you're supposed to do. You know, when you go to driver's ed or when you take the driver's exam and you see the the test question that says, what do you do at a red light? You stop. That's what you're supposed to do. Um, and the reasons for that is so that, you know, people in cross traffic can go so that we don't cause an accident, those sorts of things. So are you conforming, conforming when you stop at a red light? Yes, you are. But at the same time, is that necessary? Is that conformity necessary in order for us to run and live in a safe world? It is. So in certain instances, we can recognize that conformity is both normal and useful, um, while in certain other instances, such as um, you know a poor decision made by a group member um, who then coerces other group members into at least complying with them, um, can be seen as a bad form of conformity. So hopefully we'll learn a lot about um, conforming in different behaviors and different situations where we're more likely to conform in this unit. Um, and hopefully it won't arouse your psychological reactants and make you think, well, no, I don't conform. Other people do, but I don't conform. Because remember, I'm always right, according to the rights rules of social psychology. Thanks.